How is long COVID diagnosed? Every person's journey to getting a diagnosis of long COVID is different. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that there is no specific test for it and other conditions that cause similar symptoms should be ruled out beforehand. The definition of long COVID according to the NICE guidelines are the symptoms that continue or develop after acute COVID-19 infection, which cannot be explained by an alternative diagnosis. How was long COVID diagnosed? Every person's journey to getting a diagnosis of long COVID is different. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, which means there's no specific test for it and other conditions that cause similar symptoms should be ruled out beforehand. The definition of long COVID according to the NICE guidelines are the symptoms that continue or develop after acute COVID-19 infection, which cannot be explained by an alternative diagnosis. The first thing to do is to exclude any other conditions that could explain a person's symptoms. After that, we need to assess for any serious complications, including severe oxygen desaturation on exercise, signs of severe lung disease, chest pain that could be from a cardiac problem, or in children, multi-system inflammatory syndrome. If a person presents with one of these complications, they should have this addressed as a priority before returning the focus back to confirming their diagnosis. The most important indicators for long COVID will come from a person's story of their symptoms. It's important to take a comprehensive history, including information about physical health, psychological well-being and functional ability. Any examination that is done should consider all of these factors as well. A good history can reveal some particular patterns that make long COVID a more likely diagnosis. These could be things like symptoms starting after an acute illness that sounds like it was COVID-19. It could be that someone's functional ability has significantly reduced over quite a short period of time. Or it could be that they have PESE or post-exertional symptom exacerbation where their symptoms get worse after physical, cognitive or social exertion. We need to remember that long COVID has wide ranging and fluctuating symptoms and these can change over time. The most important indicators for long COVID will come from a person's story of their symptoms. It's important to take a comprehensive history, including information about physical health, psychological well-being and functional ability. Any examination that's done should consider all of these factors as well. A good history can reveal some particular patterns that make long COVID a more likely diagnosis. These could be the symptoms starting after an acute illness that sounds like it was COVID-19. It could be that someone's functional ability has significantly reduced over quite a short period of time. Or it could be that they have PESE or post-exertional symptom exacerbation where the symptoms get worse after physical, cognitive or social exertion. We need to remember that long COVID has wide ranging and fluctuating symptoms, and these can change over time. In terms of investigations, these should be reactive based on what a person's symptoms are, as there is no specific set of tests to rule in or rule out long COVID. It's advised to consider blood tests as a broad screen, a chest X-ray within 12 weeks of acute illness, and potentially an exercise tolerance test. Blood tests can be used as a broad screen of health and to rule out other conditions. The NICE guidelines suggest to include screens for the heart, liver, kidneys and thyroid. A chest x-ray should be done within 12 weeks of acute illness in order to assess for signs of lung disease, particularly lung fibrosis. It should be kept in mind, however, that a clear chest x-ray does not exclude all lung diseases. An exercise tolerance test should only be considered if it is safe to do so for that person. It should be considered on a case by case basis as exertion can be unsafe for some people living with long COVID. The test itself should also be modified to account for that person's baseline level of ability. During the tolerance test, we should monitor heart rate, blood pressure, breathlessness and oxygen saturation. It's important to remember that not everyone was able to access a COVID test at the time they were acutely unwell. In fact, most people living with long COVID have no history of a positive COVID test and were never hospitalized. For alpha and beta variants of COVID-19, 
a loss of taste or smell was an incredibly sensitive sign for being positive for infection. If someone describes this in their history, it increases the suspicion that they may have had COVID-19 in the past. A lack of positive COVID test therefore shouldn't exclude someone from being diagnosed with long COVID. This is becoming less of a problem now, but it was a bias faced by those who believe they had COVID when access to testing was difficult. To summarize, long COVID is a diagnosis of exclusion. Investigations are aimed at ruling out other conditions and assessing for safety, so a comprehensive history is currently the most valuable tool for reaching a diagnosis. It's important to keep safety as a focus. If someone presents with serious complications, it's important that these are addressed as a priority as long COVID can affect almost any system in the body. Finally, we need to remember that having no positive COVID test in the past doesn't mean someone can't have long COVID, as there were many historic reasons that people were unable to access PCR testing. If you want to find out more about how long COVID is diagnosed, follow the link to the NICE guidelines below.